I was tagging a post um, by Mortal Living God, right? And it was a post of a father carrying his newborn child out of the hospital with police officers behind him. Now, first of all, I was completely lost. I had to like really kind of dig and the ancestors brought to me information um, about this because you know, you know, you guys know I, 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 when I have questions, I'm not gonna like post something that I got questions about. Like, I at least need to have my questions answered. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna ask the same questions I got. So, I went digging, <clears throat> and I found some more information. Um, so, my, I, my view of this video and what happened here is gonna be different. I'm not gonna talk about what the white supremacists did because <laughs> what else do you expect white supremacists to do? <laughs> I'm not shocked so I'm not going to talk about that aspect um, aside from the fact that we need to be careful and see this and know that this is a possibility when we have our babies in the hospital what I do want you to pay attention to is how important the father of this child was in this situation imagine what would she have done without him watch we, we had the nurses come in here and um speak to us about the whole inducing the labor. That's basically what they're trying to do. And um, they talk, talk to us about medications. We told them we don't want nothing that's going to affect the baby at all. They said, uh, oh, there's no possible side effects with this except if the person that's injecting it injected too much or too, uh, the pace of it house injected. So I went and go get food she goes to sleep we come back they already got her hooked up to the oxytocin i get on the internet and do my own research and find out that it may cause heart disease um breathing problems jaundice um <clears throat> a couple other um things that i don't want seizures i don't want these things associated with my baby i want a natural born baby if my baby not ready to come yet it's not ready to come yet I don't, they wasn't there when we had sex, so they don't know exactly when the baby was made. This is all off educated guesses. So maybe we got another week. Maybe we shouldn't be sitting here inducing and forcing the shit on my baby. I feel like my baby's gonna come on the 15th. That's what I've been telling her for the longest. And that's a spiritual feeling. That's a feeling I feel inside. I'm connected to that baby, not these nurses and doctors. So I feel like our rights was violated, man. Like, honest to God, I feel like we was lied to just to push an agenda, just to push a, a, a medication, you know, or something on us. And we didn't we didn't want it. Now they took it off as our request. The woman come in here smiling. I said, why are you smiling? It's a serious situation. She kept smiling. I said, you going to keep smiling? Yeah. I said, well, get the fuck up out of here then because you disrespectful to me and how I feel about my baby. So I told her to leave, they left out, and now you came back. You can refuse. Yeah, you so right. I know. Okay. <laughs> I, that's the thing. I'm educated. I'm, I'm far from dumb. Was it, it, so it, refusing, refusing the Pitocin is not a problem. Like, you can refuse that. And it is completely in your right to do that. So there should be no issues with that. They should have had no issues with that. Right. And she shouldn't have been hooked up to it while she was asleep. And I'm out of the room. Well, that is a standard protocol that, that, that we use all the time. Um, literally hundreds of thousands, of millions of times it's used. Like it's a very common drug that's used in in the birth of children. It don't matter. Let's do well, no, this. I agree. It's meat, up to you. Meat, meat is eaten every day. You go to a restaurant, get meat anywhere. We don't eat meat. So uh, so to bring me something and tell me it's great and it got meat in it, I don't give a fuck because it's so common that everybody eats meat. Mm -hmm. We don't eat it. So anything I tell you I don't want in my body or want in her body or want in my baby's body, don't put it in there. I don't care how often y'all use it. I agree. However, however, well, you can listen to all what I have to say, man. Otherwise, it's going to be a fruitless conversation. Well, you said you left... And it's like someone came in here and snuck it in while she was sleeping. That's not the case. That's what I'm explaining. The case is we have standard protocols that we do all the time. You can refuse them anytime you want. And that's what I'm actually here to advocate on your behalf. <laughs> you can refuse them and stop it, and I'm with that. And they will, and they have. Um, so that's not a problem. We'll stop the Pitocin, stop it's not running, we're good to go. Um...
But as far as us and protocols, you know, there's a set of protocols we always follow. You say don't follow that protocol, we won't. You know, it's the same. It's the same thing on the other side when someone's in the ICU critical care. We do full code. We'll do all measures go until you say, hey, I do not want you to go full measures on my dad or whatever. Then we'll stop. But our protocols is, are something that are that we have to follow. Now you say stop it, it stops. So I think it's resolved, right? Like I mean, we'll know when the baby comes. If anything's wrong with my baby, y'all be ready. Oh well, that's a whole nother issue. But yeah, yeah. I mean that's your right too, right? Yeah. I, so I got lawyers on standby, man. So, I don't play no games. So so that's up to you too. Yeah. We'll, we'll um, see. Now as it stands now, I think everything's okay. They stopped it, and you know we're here to help along the process. That's the point. We're not here to fight you. Right. Shouldn't be. Yeah. No one's here to fight you. But like I was talking to my friend, she said I didn't go to the hospital. I was dilated to a nine. My baby came out just fine, natural, and that's what I'm aiming for. I don't want, if my baby's not ready, send us home. Tell us the baby's not ready. Don't start. Oh, we need to help your contractions. They're not close enough. We need to know. Let God do the process. Let nature take its course. We don't need human doing nothing. Straight up. Straight like that, homie. That's how I feel about it. I do, too. I had mine at home. However, you can also, you can also have, I've had two at home and two at the hospital, so I've done both ways. But... You, you you can go home anytime you want. If you say, "Hey, I want to go. I want to leave." You can leave. Or yeah, this is the, this is the scary process. I don't want to go home now that they've started shit on and put. Home now that they've started shit on and put the balloon in her, the, did the cervical thing, all that. I don't want to go now because a lot of things that's going on in her now aren't natural. And I feel like we should be here just in case her body does something that's unexpected. Well, what what is what did they do? What did they put a balloon? The balloon is out. I know it's out, but they oh, already yeah. put it in. It oh, already oh, stretched. Right. She already bled. Come on, man. Of right, course right. it's out, man. Okay, I didn't know that. That was my bad. I didn't understand that. So there's basically nothing going on. Okay. So we're back to completely natural, normal. Right? Is that right? Like there's Hopefully. No, okay. I mean, I understand some other things were done that you didn't necessarily want. Okay. So time, time, you know, time. Yeah. Look at this, man. We leaving out the hospital like this. Because I got officers coming all in my room while my girl is naked. You know what I'm saying? So... Hey, Pat, y'all need to get our stuff out of there. Just you need to meet your lady. We need our... She don't want to stay. This is my wife. You dumb. No. Man, you sound stupid. This is my wife. Go. Okay. We need our stuff so we can go. Thank you. Okay. Can you give the baby no, service? Can you get your stuff? Man, you suck. No. Bro, I don't even know what y'all trying to do. Listen. We, we, we no, up out of here. Let's go. Get, my, get, get our stuff. We're going to Harassing, harassing, he was harassing, making he racial would not, statements. He was not making racial no, statements. No, I, I prefer an Asian. Okay. That's, that's not, not racist. racist like that. That's a preference. That's a that's preference, not, exactly. He was <laughs> that his I'm, oh, this is good. This is all real good. And they already knew that. So why all of a sudden that was racist? You're more than welcome to go grab your stuff if you'd like, like I said. Baby, go and I'll go. I'll, I, I I'll get a wheelchair. Go get, go get dressed, okay. booty. Go in there and get dressed. No, I'm not. Come on, let's go get dressed. Come on. Go ahead. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Trust me. I own this hospital, boy. Yeah. Now, we would like privacy while my girl get dressed. Thank you. Okay, there's a privacy screen right there. There we go again. Why can't he close the door? Wow. Because it's a safety issue. Safety issue. We can't see what's going on. At this time, I can't. At this time, you can't tell them to leave? Okay, while my girl is naked. Look at that. One, two, three. And it's like four, five other officers outside, too. My baby right here. These dudes rushed up in here, man. <sighs> because we asked for a, we asked for a breast pump. We asked for a breast pump. Don't you know they tried to talk us out of using a breast pump? So I, the, the woman argued me. She argued me up and down, telling me no. So I say I say I don't want no. I don't. Okay, I want a new nurse. 
Can we get a new nurse? I don't want you to be my nurse no more. for a new nurse. And then they send the police. Straight like that. Honest to God, true. But it's okay. But it's okay. Hey, my girl's naked. I'm finna close this door. She's breastfeeding. Can you come out and talk to us? No, I don't need to. I don't. We're finna leave. We're, we're getting dressed and we're finna, we're finna exit out of this hospital. Thank you. Okay, go ahead and do that. Excuse me. Wow, you see this? Excuse me. You're being recorded too, so. Okay, that's, that's great. So, like I said, my girl's naked. There's we're trying to see screen right there, right there. Okay, you. so we can't see her. We don't need y'all in here. Door. We we don't need y'all in here. Listen, hospital staff. We don't need y'all in here. Me, we are leaving. Okay. So leave us alone. Go change. Leave us the fuck alone. Bye. My girl is naked. Can y'all please get out? Please. Hey. Can y'all get out while my girl is naked so we can get dressed and Sorry. exit out of the hospital? Sorry. Please. Ma'am, can you step behind the privacy screen for us? She don't have to do nothing. Quit talking to her. She's holding my baby. My husband that was forced to leave the hospital with his naked wife got a chance to sit down and talk to the head nurse. Update. I spoke to the husband. He said they also tried forcing the MMR, whooping cough, flu, and hepatitis B vaccine on us. And I don't want that stuff in my baby, said the father. Do not forget, black women are two to six times more likely to die from complications of pregnancy more than any woman of any other race. Valley Medical San Jose violated Ugo Israel and his wife because they asked for a breast pump after his wife gave birth. The nurse argued them down on using it. They asked for a new nurse. It's a simple right. If you don't want to help us, get us another nurse who does. Well, clearly, if you're not black, you don't have that right. That's when the original nurse called the San Jose Sheriff Department. Okay, truth time. I'm in my late 30s. So as I speak about this situation, understand what age group I'm coming from, okay? I'm in my late 30s. Late. Really late. So, and then I'm a single woman. With I'm a divorced single woman with no children, okay? So understand where I'm coming from <clears throat> when I speak on this topic. There are a lot of women that come to me all the time that say, Sis, you can do it all by yourself. Just have a baby. Ah, ah, ah. No. I will not do that to my child. And I am going to say, first, before I even, I'm going to preface this by saying, you know, when things happen, you do what you need to do. When you get pregnant by accident, you do what you need to do to provide for you and your children. So this is no judgment on those that have had accidents that have become blessings to their life, okay? Because I love kids, all right? So all kids are blessings to me. So, except little white supremacist children. Anyway, anyway. Um, so... Um, because they grew up to be adult white supremacists, just so you know why they're not blessing to me. <laughs> now, moving on. Um, okay, story time. So I knew this girl, um, we were along the same age, and she wanted to have a baby, you know, as much as I did, and or I do, and she decided, <laughs> she told me that she was going to look into artificial insemination. Now, we weren't close enough for, for me to like, because it's none of my business, you do what you want to do, it's not my place to tell everybody what they should do so sometimes when you got to keep your opinion to yourself but you know here today we gonna, I'm gonna share my opinion on the situation and my opinion is that selfish I feel that you are already a bad mother or a selfish mother at least because you have to think about what's best for your child and what's best for your child is to have two parents and you cannot want a child more then you want a good environment for your child. Like, that's not fair. You're bringing the child in on a negative, and that's not just because you want to have a baby. I, I don't think that's right for the child. You, you already, like, <sighs> watch Francis Cress Wilson explain the psychological damages of that happens to children when they don't have adequate fathers. If we checkmate him, we can make their whole thing collapse. We can make every male child confused. I see little children, male children. A child says to me, Dr. Wilson, you know, all the little boys brought to the psychiatrist because they won't work in school. Little child says, Dr. Wilson, I think I can do my homework if I just had an official father. Now, when a child says that, the psychiatrist wants to fall under the desk in here. Another child said to me, if I had a father, he could at least have taught me what goes on under the hood of a car. Mm -hmm. Now, these are people 10, 11. Mm -hmm. See, all these little boys that are acting up, 
These are children that are traumatized. They're children who are depressed. And children get depressed. Where is my father? See, I'm not saying the father's a bad white supremacy said, I'll put you in check. I'm going to put you in check because I have to do it for my genetic survival. Mm, something I want you to catch, family. One, the father was upset because they gave the mother medication while she was in labor. He was pissed off about that. He made them stop the medication, okay? They were trying to force medication on the mother, okay? Two, um, he said that they also tried to force the vaccinations on the baby, which he refused, okay? Now she requests a breast pump. That's when they had it and they called the police on him. It is so important to have a man by your side. Not just any man, but a man that could see that shit coming from a mile away while you are laid up on drugs and unable to look out for yourself because I'm smart enough to look out for myself. But when I'm in that kind of pain, can I do that by myself? I need someone, what? I need this standing next to me watching. 